Morris, how you doing? It's Henry at Morris and Morris. Good morning. It's a rainy day today here in Huntington, Long Island, but some guy wants to see this Suzuki two horsepower Toro Edger. As you guys know, I picked this off the street thanks to a tip from Frank D. I'm not sure. Anyway, it was missing the carburetor. Carburetor is nowhere to be found. Can't buy it. Discontinued. There's absolutely nothing on eBay except maybe some used ones which leaks. So, and they want 60 bucks for it or something. So I took a, uh, I tried a bunch of different carburetors as you know from a previous episode. And then uh, I actually put one of those black plastic Briggs and Stratton lawnmower carburetors on there. Uh, this is the one with the um, primer. So it's a 400 or 500E series, the one without the primer bulb. Anyway, uh, I fabricated the bracket and for the air cleaner to fit over it, and it ran great. Today I'm going to try to sell it for a hundred bucks. It uh, was listed for 150, but some guy offered me a hundred, and I said okay. Uh, so I'm going to meet him in about 15 minutes. I sure hope it starts. I just added some gas just in case. I'm going to put this uh, switch to on. There's no primer or nothing, you know. I'm just going to put a full. Uh, let's put the throttle up. So it starts, runs, like I said, the throttle when I put on here, it wasn't exact, you know what I mean? So if I tighten that little small wire to give it a little bit more tension, as you can see, if you put your hand there, it won't surge anymore. But it's uh, just needs some fine tuning. I'm gonna do that right now. Everybody, it's Quinn the Mailman. Bad Henry, where all these packages when I needed them while my route was inspected. So this day is turning out to be good right away. <laughs> Sold that crazy edger for 100 bucks. Score! Oh, and also turns out that the guy recognized me. He says, hey, you sold me a mower last year. I'm like, oh, uh, I did. I, I'm sorry, I don't remember. I said, um, how's it going with it? He goes, runs great. I'm like, 
Oh, that's good. So that's great. Sold that edger. I didn't think I would ever get that edger sold, you know. Um, this was a uh, engine swap I did yesterday. Uh, guy still coming to get it later this afternoon. Wiped it down a little bit. Let's just see if it starts on the first pull. And if it still smokes from that sea foam. Awesome. Really strong, too. Very strong. Put this in my van. So there's a lady driving down from upstate New York. <laughs> I texted her like 10.30 this morning and I said, Hey, you still coming to get this? And she goes, uh, yeah, I'm on my way. She'll be there by one. I'm like, you're driving like two hours to come down here to get a mower? She goes, oh, no, 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 no. I'm visiting family today in your neck of the woods. Figure I'd pick up a mower at the same time. So I've got two choices. That craftsman one with the bagger that looks just like the one that Darren gave me six months ago. I have that one too. So I have two identical mowers. I have it listed for 135 each and uh, I'll take as much as a hundred bucks, no big deal. But then uh, she also saw this one with the big wheel in the back. This is an MTD yard machines, whatever. Auto choke, runs good, you know, good push mower, nice wheels, but the wheel looks like it's kind of towed to the left. If this one could be could be out a little more, like this. I gotta break it, Ken. Maybe not. Ah, see? Not too much. It's just a little uh, bendage. That's right. Bendage. <clears throat> this one's kind of uh, going outwards, like that. It's a little bit of a. Uh, an adjustment will fix it all. No problem. Look at that. Nice and smooth. I'm just sitting in my van for a while or my garage. Let's see if this starts up. Dum dum dum. Dum 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 dum. Every time I do the third dum 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 dum, it works. Three pulls. Need some gas. I'm gonna wipe this down a little bit so it looks better. There you go. Just a quick spit shine. <laughs> On the chopping block is my Tecumseh Craftsman Eager One. The one I got that was in pieces. Changed the engine cowling to this beige one, you know. Change the recoil starter and the rope. Uh, put the gas tank back on again. Blue carb spray in there and it did turn over. Actually has a decent bag. I'm gonna put a clamp on the hose for the fuel line and then we're gonna put some gas in and see if that carburetor is clean. I just put some gas in there and I'm amazed that it doesn't leak. Because these Tecumseh carbs leak. And this red primer bulb, oh god. It's probably one of the main reasons why I hate this so much. These red primer bulbs, after they sit for a while, they get so stiff and rigid. I don't even think it's doing anything. Let's uh, see if it starts. We do know it turns over. It was just help it out a bit. Sometimes when the engine's running, certain vacuums suck more, <laughs> suck air, I mean, using some contact cleaner from my friends over at Lucas Oil. Start with just that. 
it will start with the starting fluid. So it looks like the uh, carburetor is dirty. Let's just drop the bowl real quick and see. So I'm just going to cheat a little. Because it's kind of a pain to take this carburetor off. Um, you could loosen these. But that's a pain because you can't even get to that area in the inner. So I take the muffler off. Sometimes you could try to get um, your impact bit in there to get the intake manifold bolt off on the inside. And then over here you can take it off and, and the whole thing will just come off. But I'm going to try to cheat and just take the bowl off. See if uh, we could just check out what the carburetor looks like. That's right, I'm covering up dirt so that the uh, fuel won't make the uh, dirt dirty. <laughs> so there's fuel, should be running, right? So a ton of fuel should pour out. <laughs> Super dry, so it's not getting any fuel. Look, ooh, that bowl's clean, but no fuel's coming out. <laughs> <laughs> None. It's weird, huh? I mean, there should be fuel coming out. All right? Here, look. Let me let me pull this back out and see if fuel's coming out. <laughs> there's fuel in there, and yet there's no fuel coming out. Well, let me blow in here and see if uh, it goes through. Okay, so it does go out. Now, let me put the float up and see if it stops it. That seems to work okay. So my fuel tank is, is uh, clogged. So I clean the bowl. And uh, the jet nut is actually clear. This hole is clear. And the little tiny one that you can't even see is clear. It's really surprising. I'm just gonna put this back on again and then try to figure out why the gas tank is clogged, you know? Oh, you gotta put this on a specific way, I forget. Pivot is over there, rotate a little bit, there you go. Oh, there we go. The fuel was is coming out when I tilt when I put it back uh, vertical again, horizontal again. It's weird. So if it's getting fuel to the thing, why isn't it getting into the carburetor? I did blow it, right? And it did seem to be coming out. Drop that bowl again, see if it's filled with uh, gas. Uh-huh, gas is pouring out now, but yet still not priming. I can't figure it out, so I'm gonna take the carburetor off. go. You can kind of squeeze your uh, long, <laughs> squeeze your long uh, Phillips bit in between the muffler and there you could get this out. It takes a little bit of weaseling. Weaseling! And then you got the 
This is on the top. It's been a while since I did these because I hate them so much. And you can just disconnect this area here. It's probably easier. There you go. And then this is a breather off. Push in. And there it is right there. I'm going to loosen this and take it apart. I'm going to clamp off the fuel here. Remove this fuel line without breaking it. And even if I did it, so what? Long enough. And there's your Tecumseh carburetor. And it looks like somebody's been messing with the gasket. There's some RTV silicone around it. And there's some debris in there. Not a whole lot. Motion tube is clear. Hole in the Welsh. Which is actually the primer circuit. I guess I'm gonna have to take the pin out. I hate doing it, but I'm gonna do it. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna. Pin the float with the needle. Looks clean. Shake it. Empty. Seat looks good. And I don't know. I'm gonna blow some carb spray into the fuel. See if it pops out that so it should be getting gas right there is a hole on the inside that's hard to reach should i take this bracket off why not it's easy There's a hole right there. Hard to get to when you have the bracket on. Uh -huh. That's the primer bracket um, circuit. And there's a lot of debris there. So maybe that was clogged, huh? So that it, when you push the primer bulb, it, nothing's coming out. I think it's clean now. The thing for the vent. part of the primary circuit also. Uh-huh. Comes down there. Uh, this little hole there. We always forget about this little hole. There we go. Maybe that was it. Alright, it looks alright now. Guess I'll put it together. So I blew it off a little bit. It looks a little better. Put the bowl back on. Everything seems to be good. I forgot about this one. The fixed jet in here. And I believe this is the pilot jet. I'll try to take that out. Take the fixed jet out and uh, blow into it. Why is it so difficult? Well, because if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. Well, everybody is really doing it. There we go. There's a fixed jet in here. This is the only thing we haven't cleaned yet. Let's take it out. Come on. There we go. Yeah, looks clean. See there's a small hole here and on top there. And poke some holes through there. Let's see. Well, it was clear. Are we clear? Crystal. Oh, well, I guess I could blow into there. And I'll put it back. So I'll put it back together again. You guys noticed it's much cleaner now. Every time I, uh, I touch it, 
If I see dirt, I'll wipe it. I totally do hate these Tecumseh engines. I totally hate them. Hate them, hate them. Doesn't seem like it's still priming. Because usually when you press the primer bulb, right, some of the fluid comes out of this hose here. And I don't see none. Let's help it out again. I've been running this for about two or three minutes still pretty much smoke coming out um, I think maybe the oil might be overfilled it's filled up to double of what it should be double full line is here it's double I'm gonna dump up some dump out some Earl That might be more than more than what I wanted to take out, but it's all right. Been running for another three minutes. There you go just changed the air filter dumped out half of the oil that was in there no longer smokes adjusted the idle uh, not the idle the throttle uh, screw and uh, running at good rpms and uh, <laughs> shined it up as I went every part that I touched I used the gas uh, soaked rag and just wiped it down and uh, <laughs> maybe I'll get 50 bucks for it and maybe I'm selling myself short, huh? That's actually a 21 inch dust blocker bag. In pretty good shape too. So, you know, push mower with a bag. 100 bucks? 
I still don't even know if this will start without primer fluid. You know what I mean? It's going to run now because it's, you know, hot. But then uh, it doesn't prime, you know what I mean? I mean, maybe it will with the air filter on. Because when you do prime this, it's supposed to shoot some fuel through that red uh, straw and then kind of saturate the air filter to give it the vapors for it to suck to start. I guess that's how it's designed, you know, because otherwise that, because that hose, that straw goes right into the air filter. So I'm thinking it's for vapors, mist vapors into the intake to get it to start. Oh, I always thought that was a silly idea, but whatever. I mean, they sold 10 million of these, you know why? Because <laughs> I had about a million of these. <laughs> It's okay though, I guess. I mean, look, I picked it off the street and I just spent, I guess, $2 for that air filter, maybe a dollar for the air filter. But the push mower that runs, mows, I guess, with a bagger, it's in good shape, sorta. Yeah, I'll list it for a hundred bucks. Anyway, that's my day today. Selling that edger. I might sell a couple of mowers later. It'll be in my next video if I do. Uh, and getting another one going for me to list. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Because the UPS guy screwed this up. I'm going to see you next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey, if you guys enjoyed the video, remember to give me a like. Also, comment below. Subscribe. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's free, right? Also, hit that little bell. That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook, as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers. Really appreciate all the support. Also, to keep the videos coming every day, support the channel. Bye.